On this third Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the, um, the cornerstone of the faith, which is joy. For the past three Sundays, we've looked at, at hope, and we've looked at peace, and today we look at joy. I believe my, my kiddos are headed out to Children's Church this morning. Uh, of course, you're more than welcome to stay in. I do apologize for some of our uh, technical difficulties. Look, Melody just looked at me. She said, I think the computer's dead, dead. Uh, so she was trying to restart it up and down, and, and it just finally gave out on her. I hope you'll forgive me today. Uh, I'm moving a little bit slower than normal. Uh, in between a, a respiratory infection that I had a, a week and a half ago, and then I had some... Had a little minor procedure done this past week. Of course, I had some uh, complications with that and uh, wound up getting a little pneumonia because of uh, some complications with the anesthesia and intubation and all that type of stuff. I'm fine. I'm here. And I'm preaching. Y'all not that lucky. I will tell you, I'm tired, though. Y'all, but guess what? I, I still have joy. Amen. And that's precisely what today's sermon is about. It's about joy. And look, I, like I said, I'm so joyful this morning that I'm going to give y'all a very short sermon. It's the season of giving, so I'm going to give you a break. That, and I don't think I can stand up here for 45 minutes. So you're going to get about 25. Today, look, as we light this, this third candle of this Advent season, we continue to build this excitement for the Christmas season. But we build excitement to the very real birth of the source of hope, peace, joy, and love for all of us that claim to be believers. This birth of Jesus, the Messiah, our Savior, the Son of God. And y'all, this morning, I, I, I'm going to confess to you something. This was not an easy sermon for me to write this week. Joy is something that is so easy for a lot of preachers and pastors to get up and to tell people, you just have joy day in and day out. No matter what, just have joy. Your problems aren't all that bad. Just trust in Jesus. Pray a little bit and have joy and you'll make it through everything. Y'all, I've never claimed to be a, a, a showman. Instead, I, oftentimes I'm a little bit too real with you. Sometimes I'm a little rough around the edges. But I want to tell you, if I got up and told you this morning to just have joy, no matter what, well... You know, I'd be a little insensitive. I'd be out of touch, and I dare say I'd be a hateful pastor if that's all that I said this morning. If I just glossed over everything with joy instead of going into a little bit more detail of what joy actually is, what joy truly means. We have to look at this joy that Jesus promises. He promises us joy. And we have to look at how we can cultivate joy and work on joy in our lives. You know, it's odd to me that these ideas, these, these candles that we have lit the past three weeks and will continue for the next week, this hope, peace, joy, and love, when I was a kid, you know, these ideas were these fluffy ideas, right? They were these, these neat, faraway things. Hope, love, joy, and peace. Okay. They were these very fluffy, very pie-in-the-sky, happy-go-lucky things. But I have found as I've gotten older, as life gives you twists and turns, hope, peace, Joy and love, instead of becoming fluffy, nice words, they become the bedrock by which we have to build our lives on. They become foundational things that we have to cling to. 
when life throws us all sorts of calamity. So let's consider joy today. You know the old song, I got the joy, 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 joy <coughs> down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Come on, I see some of y'all actually singing. Y'all even got the head bobbing. <laughs> some of y'all know that from vacation Bible school. Let's dig into joy. Here's your first thought for today. Now look, you won't be able to see it up there, so instead you're going to have to look at me this morning. I do apologize. There's better things to look at. Today your first thought is this. What is joy? Joy is the very root of happiness. I want you to put that in your mind this morning, that joy is the very root of of happiness. In our modern world, you know, we use these phrases of joy and happiness. We use them interchangeably. We swap them up all the time. However, this Advent season, as we begin looking towards Jesus' birth, we're, we're challenged to look into what each one of these words, hope, peace, joy, and love, truly mean. And I hope to give you an analogy this morning that'll help you a little bit to discern the difference between what joy is and what happiness is. All right, how many times have I told you, as I was a school teacher and even as I see kids that I used to teach and they ask me, well, Mr. James, where is it that you're pastoring now? And I always say, well, it's Live Oak Community Church. And nine times out of 10, I get that, oh, that's the tree church. Okay, so. <laughs> There's nothing more fitting than to use the analogy of a tree to help us understand the difference between what joy is and what happiness is. You see, just like a tree, the leaves of a tree represent our happiness in life. Now sometimes, just like a tree that's in the breeze, that's in a strong wind, guess what? Those leaves can get knocked off. Those leaves represent our external circumstances, the things that are happening to us in our lives during the, the spring seasons of our life where we have blessings, we have goodness. Even the summer seasons of life where we're experiencing new things, when we're going on new adventures, meeting new people, we can hold on to those Leaves of happiness, right? A lot of us during those spring seasons and those summer seasons of life, our trees just fill to the brim. We look healthy. We're full of happiness. This emotion of happiness, it's tied to all the, the nice things of life. Joy, however, is so different than happiness. Because joy is deep-rooted. It's the foundation of our tree. It's what sustains us through every season. Not just the spring seasons of life or the summer seasons of life, but the fall seasons of life when happiness tends to dry up. In the winter seasons of life, when we often feel like we're left out in the cold, when every leaf of happiness that's on our tree is falling off. And oftentimes, folks, in these winter seasons, our arms are bare. They don't have leaves on them. Instead, just like that old tree, they're lifted up to heaven, waiting for spring. That's the difference between happiness and joy. Joy is what nourishes us. And frankly, folks, as believers, joy is what keeps you alive. It's what keeps you pushing forward to be able to look towards the spring that is to come. It's this bound up potential of what's happened in the past and what might be happening in the present but it's the potential of what could happen in the future. In Psalm 1611, it says this, that you made known to me, you make known to me the path of life. 
And you fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. And so go back and think about this tree. These leaves of happiness that we have. Look, they are often expressed through the health of our roots. Some people, you know, they have happiness all over their tree. They got leaves everywhere. But as soon as life comes through and the wind blows, they lose all that happiness. They lose all sense of joy because no longer are all the nice things in life happening. Instead, a storm has come about. And what happens if you have this temporary happiness and your limbs are bare? Those type of people, they wind up miserable. The slightest little inconvenience will make them dead on the inside and just like a tree, they'll be all gnarled up and ugly on the outside. And you'll see it expressed in how they treat people, in the words that they use, in the actions that they do. And look, joy, y'all, is something that we should all strive for and that we should be looking for as believers. Because it's not just some fleeting emotion. It's not something that's just temporary. Instead, as I said, joy is our source of contentment, one that holds you steady when life is threatening to tear your tree down. And I know that I'm preaching to the choir this morning. I know that, I know that, I know that. But let me speak as I look around to some of my younger believers. To some of you that maybe you haven't been a believer for very long, but you got a little seasoning of life on you. If you think that following Jesus is nothing but blessings upon blessings upon blessings, whew, look around the room. There's a lot of stories that could be told. If you haven't been hit by a storm yet, be prepared. Because one day the winds will come. There's an old saying that goes like this. Either you've just come out of a storm, you're in the middle of the storm, or you're about to go into one. For some of my younger folks in here, you're thinking your biggest storm is, you know, midterms here next week or finals. As we get older, we realize those storms get bigger and bigger. And I said this morning, if I got up here and I just told you, well, y'all, church, just go out this week and just be filled with joy, joy and happiness in everything, no matter what. N just turn that frown upside down. Guess what, folks? Life happens. And let's be real personal here. Just in this body of believers, there are three families right now that are not full of happiness. Instead, they're grieving. We've lost three wonderful believers just in the past month. And yes, I can, I can say this, that these three were believers. And so as the, the saying goes, our loss is what? Heaven's gain. Boy, each of these three that have passed away in the past month are looking at us going, y'all need to get over it. I'm having a good time. Y'all the ones belly aching. Don't worry about me. Here's the deal though. Grief and sadness is a part of the process of how we deal with losing loved ones. As I look around this room, I know that this Advent season, this Christmas season, this holiday season, for many of us, it's not always about the lights and the trees and the presents. Instead, it's about the memories of those that we lost around this time of year. You can grieve. You can even experience sadness yet still have joy. Did you know that? Because happiness is fleeting. Yeah. 
But we get this deep and residing joy. And so the question of it is, if we know the difference between happiness being fleeting and joy being something that stays with us, then the real question is, is how do I attain this joy? And as I said, I look around the room, there's lots of stories to be told, lots of testimonies. I think all of you would agree with me that Jesus is the root of joy. It is through him. We need to recognize that in this little town of Bethlehem, as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, this humble stable witnessed the arrival of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The angels proclaimed good news to the shepherds. And the star led the wise men to where the Savior lay. I have no doubt that the air was filled with joy as Mary is sitting there holding her precious baby boy, the one that would not just change the world, but he would change eternity. There was joy that day. And as he grew into a man, Jesus tells his followers and he tells his disciples this. He says, you have to understand that I am the source of joy. Everything that you desire, everything that you are clawing after, those things are temporary, yet I am eternal. It's through me that you will be fulfilled. And he says, if you go looking for the other stuff, if you go looking for the temporary things, then you will always fall short. In fact, Jesus says this, in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, in verse 5, he says this, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, Jesus uses this metaphor of vines and branches He's showing us how connected we have to be to him as believers with our Lord. The root of a tree, it draws its nourishment from the soil. It, it's able to provide sustenance and stability to the entire tree. And look, similarly, when you and I are rooted <coughs> in Jesus... <coughs> Even when our, our spiritual bellies seem empty. And even when life is not giving us the best hand. We're able to pull this spiritual nourishment. This spiritual sustenance. From the king of kings. He is the source of joy. That y'all as believers it should permeate everything about our existence. No matter what comes about. In all the different circumstances of life, he provides this foundation that we can anchor ourselves in. Something that is eternal, not temporary. This should be the source of our strength, our resilience, and our gratitude. Y'all, Jesus is the only thing, and I've told you this before, I've got tons and tons of friends of different beliefs, some who have no belief at all. And I don't say this just because I'm a pastor, a preacher. I say this because I'm a believer. I don't know how people make it through this life without Jesus. Because when we have highs and lows, and my God, church, do we have highs and lows in this life? When we do go through that, Jesus gives us this escape route. He gives us the fire escape to all the different things that are thrown at us. And look, I want to prove this to you this morning. I would advise you to do this. If, if you're not a big Bible reader, well, first off, you need to be. But if you're not a big Bible reader, let me share with you some verses. And these are from Jesus' closest friends, from his disciples, from his followers. 
And y'all, if, if you're familiar with the Bible, with the disciples, each and every one of them had their joy tested. Matter of fact, almost every single one of them was willing to give their life in not a calm and easy way, but in painful, excruciating ways in their service to the Son of God. And over and over in the New Testament, you know, encouragement is given by these disciples to other believers. They're telling the other believers to keep on keeping on. That we can experience this powerful, unending joy in our lives. As long as we put our faith in Him. Now listen to this. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, it says this. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats and do not be frightened. In James 1 and 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Again, in James 1 verse 12, he said, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And here in Romans, the Apostle Paul says this in Romans 5, 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast where in the hope of the glory of God. He continues there in Romans 5, verse 3. If you haven't written anything down or you don't remember anything today, remember this. Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 3. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Y'all, if you've been on the fence about whether or not God will get you through whatever hardship that you may be suffering, you don't have to believe me. There's a multitude of people in this room who would gladly give their testimony. Matter of fact, I want you to do this real quick. Church, I want you to imagine this morning that there's someone in here that might be struggling with their faith. And they need someone to talk to about how they can get through, how God has gotten them through. If you could be a person to share your testimony with someone who does not believe this morning, raise your hand. If you don't know the Lord this morning or if you're having problems with your faith, you see those hands that popped up. Throw them up again. If you're willing to share your testimony with somebody that might not know, if you're willing to do that this morning, you see those hands around the room. Look, and I know every single one of them. That's good folks to talk to. You may want to watch out for Papa Mike, though. <laughs> He'll buy you pizza afterwards. <laughs> There are many folks in this room who have testimonies of how it was Jesus and Jesus alone that got them through the things of life that didn't seem joyful. The things in life that didn't seem happy. Yet they were able to keep this undercurrent of joy. I say to you again, joy cannot be built on fleeting things. Joy cannot be built on on temporary circumstances. Instead, joy has to be built in the unchanged one, the unchanging one, because it is Jesus who is the source, who is the root of all joy. And look, that brings us to the third question here. 
How do we cultivate this? How do we live lives of joy? Y'all, you have to tend to the roots of your tree. The Christmas season, y'all, it's, it's not just it's not just this reminder of Jesus' birth, but instead it's a reminder of Jesus' life. And it's a reminder of the new life that Jesus gives to you and I. This spiritual fulfillment. And this joy that we experience as believers, y'all, it goes beyond a little manger scene. Instead, that joy continues through. We have to realize that everyday experience, every day that we live, is not just an opportunity to live for Jesus. I hear that often. Are you living your life for Jesus? Are you living your life for Jesus? You got to add that A on the end to it. My question today for you is not just are you living your life for Jesus? Are you living your life in and with Jesus? That's where the joy begins. In Colossians chapter 2 Verses 6 through 7. It says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Y'all, our joy that we experience here no matter what comes against us. It can be found partly in our redemption, in the fact that Jesus came to die for our sins. It also comes in this working of the Holy Spirit. Y'all, we a holiness church. I don't know if y'all realize that. Wesleyans are actually some of the original holiness people. We believe in the move of the Holy Spirit. We believe of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. And guess what that Holy Spirit does? It gives us joy. It gives us peace that goes beyond what? All understanding. Because you're going to talk to someone that's going through the many things that some of you are going through right now. Or some of you have gone through. If they don't have that work of the Holy Spirit in them. Oftentimes joy is absent. Y'all, we have to take care of the roots of our tree. Because those roots are this joy in Jesus. We have to get hands on with it. Your relationship with Christ, guess what? You got to get hands on with it. Talking about this tree stuff and plant stuff. I've never met a gardener, a good one, that was afraid to get their hands dirty. Instead, we got to go to work tending these roots of joy in our life. We've got to strengthen those roots. In order to grow in faith, guess what? You've got to surround yourself with the right conditions. You can't plant yourself in sand. Instead, you've got to plant yourself in nutritious soil. You've got to be around people that support you, that pray for you, that love you. You've also got to remove the obstacles in life. You can't plant a tree in just rocks. For us, that means that we got to remove the stones out of our life. We got to remove some of the temptations. We got to remove some of the negativity. Gosh, y'all, that even means that sometimes you might have to remove yourself from somebody else's presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all yeah. know that's true. Daily we got to prune ourselves. We got to tend to these roots. And we got to work on this stuff to help us grow in faith. Well, how do you do that? I say this all the time. Engage in prayer. I didn't just say pray. Engage 
in prayer. Make prayer an active thing, an ongoing thing. I tell you all the time, I don't care what you talk to God about. You want to talk to him about your soap opera? My nana used to talk to God about her stories. <laughs> Lord, I just don't know. Marlena, what's she coming back for? Lord, I don't even know. She'd be in the kitchen talking about soap operas. I think she'd be in there with her friend. I'm like, who you talk to? I was talking to Jesus. <laughs> Make prayer something that's constant. You will not regret it. Like, I wish I could give, like, some Tony Robbins speech and just tell you, you don't understand how prayer will change your life. And when you take it out of prayer, it's just me saying some words that I'm sending to God. And instead, you turn it into prayer. Is me and God Almighty talking about all of it. It's me and Him talking about the good. It's me and him celebrating every wonderful blessing that he has bestowed. It's also me and him talking about when I'm struggling. It's me and him talking about how my heart might be heavy. My heart might be grieving. If you don't pray, I pity you. Believer, it is one of the most powerful tools in your spiritual toolbox. Start it today when you leave church. When you get in your turn your turn your truck on, turn your car on, you start heading home, you start heading to the restaurant, just start talking to God. Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna get at Texas Roadhouse. What do you suggest? <laughs> You'll be amazed though. I know this sounds funny, but you will be amazed. And how communicating with your Lord and God will open your mind and he will open your eyes to things that he's showing you, to things that he's putting in your life. So guess what? You want to work on this? You want to develop your joy? Start talking to the one who made joy. He'll talk to you about it. Number two, Begin to read and meditate on God's word. Y'all, I know this. Y'all looking at me like, all right, Pastor Jordan, here you go again. Pray and read the Bible. Pray and read the Bible. You sound like any other preacher. You know, maybe the preacher's got some, some good ideas. When you start looking in this word, even if it's just one verse a day, God has a way of speaking to you through his word. I hear this often. People talk about wanting to hear God speak, wanting to hear God speak. It's amazing. There's a book full of God's voice. You want to know what he has to say to you? It's written down. You want to hear him speak to you? Read it out loud. It's there for the taking. All these little glints of wisdom of peace, of hope, and yes, of joy can be found in the pages of his word. How often does it sit on the shelf or sit on the coffee table? Meanwhile, man, that cell phone comes out. We can look at Facebook for three hours, but you can't read the Bible for five minutes because it's boring. <laughs> God's trying to speak to you. <clears throat> Seek his presence. Y'all, that's something that we talk about as well. I said this, we are what you call a holiness church. And you know what that means is that we are asking God, make your presence known to me. Work on me. Show me how I'm messing up. Show me how I can get closer. I always tell people as a, as a Wesleyan church, uh, people ask me, well, how's that any different than Baptists and Catholics and, and Methodists and all this other stuff? I tell people, well, we're probably the strictest hippies that you've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> we love just about anybody we come in contact with. But guess what? We are strict on who? Ourselves. You a sinner walking in the door? Come on in. Because the longer and longer you spend in God's presence, 
He'll point things out to you. And in my experience, I don't know about you, but the Lord don't spend much time pointing out to me your problems. Instead, he points out a lot of mine. And he says, here, do this. Change your mind about this. Change your way of thinking about this. Look at what I'm doing even though you're going through the trial. So, pray. Meditate. Get into your word. Seek his presence. Ask him, Lord, make yourself known to me in everything. And look at the end of the day, folks. <laughs> I'd be remiss to say. Find yourself around other believers. Find yourself around people who will love you. Who will care about you. People who are unified with you in this wonderful joy and hope and love and peace of Jesus. Because sometimes, yes, we all would love a burning bush moment where God comes down and tells us exactly why he's doing things, exactly why we might go through something, exactly what it is we need to do in life. Well, God doesn't play that game. Instead, what he's done is he sent other believers, other people that commune with him, other people that are filled with this indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And those people... The people in this very room, your family members, your friends that go to other churches that love the Lord and know him. Those are the people to surround yourself with. Because when the happiness has dried up and when you do question the joy, those are the people who will remind you of the root of your joy. Y'all, growing in faith is, is not easy. I mention this all the time. Christianity is the easiest religion to become a part of. It is probably the most difficult to be a good one at. We can all be Christian in name, but man, are we good followers. Following Jesus is ongoing maintenance. We got to tend to your roots. Here's the closing this morning. Y'all told you it, it was difficult thinking of this sermon simply because of a lot of the things that I know and a lot of the things that many of you know. <clears throat> As we light this, this candle of joy, I want you to remember this, that this, this season... This Advent is not just right now. Joy is something that will continue with you no matter the circumstance. It's a gift. It's a gift from God that, that is made manifest in the birth of Jesus. As Jesus was born in Bethlehem, God becomes flesh. And a new world comes into fruition. Because now through him, all these fruits of the Spirit can flourish. And it is through him that you and I can have transformed lives, transformed minds. He extends us this grace. So let me tell you. Don't let momentary happiness define you. Because you know happiness, it comes and it goes. Instead, this week and the coming week as we celebrate Christmas, let's focus truly on the real meaning of Christmas. This gift of eternal joy that is found in Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his resurrection, and y'all, his love for each and every one of us.
there's something so special, so different, and so supernatural about what Christ does in us. Take hold of it today. Y'all stand with me this morning. Lord, we come to you. God, in this, this season of Advent, God, as we think about each one of these foundational things, these, these emotions that, that mean more than just emotions, God, these are, these are cornerstones to our faith. This hope, peace, joy, and love, God, these are the things that signify us as believers. Just these four things, Lord, are ideas that become manifest through Jesus himself. God, and without him, we can't experience totally and wholly any of those. It's impossible to know hope without Christ. It's impossible to know true peace without Christ. It's impossible to know the deepest joy without Christ. And there is no way to know what real unbridled love looks like apart from Christ. God, my prayer this morning is that as we leave here, God, and we continue this season and we, we see people and God, these, these barriers of discussing our faith are, are very thin this time of year because everyone knows what Christmas is about. God, I would ask that you give each one of us opportunities. Opportunities to tell people the true joy of Christmas. The true joy that we find in the birth of the Savior of mankind. Not just lights, and trees, and gifts. God, and for those right now whose joy might be tested this time of year, whose lights seem a little dim, and God, whose leaves of happiness on their tree, Lord, the tree seems bare. God, I ask that you send the Holy Spirit as a comfort to work in them and around them, Lord, to uplift them. And God, we as fellow believers, allow us to be those those shoulders to lean on. God, those arms that are up underneath their arms, lifting them up. God, we humbly serve you. And Lord, we ask that you work in us to better serve you and mankind. Thank you for every single person that's come today. And God, I ask a blessing on them. Let them be safe on the way home. Lord, we love you. We ask this all in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.